Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Is everyone all here? Everyone tastes good? Good morning. Good, good, good. Good. All right, so good morning, good morning, good morning. Give me a wave if you can see me. Good morning. It is lovely to see you and welcome if you are joining us online as well. You are very welcome here too. I'm giving you a wave. And um, online, if you've got, uh, we've got a, a little issue with one of the cameras this morning. So it might be a slightly different experience to how it might be normally. But, uh, um, but join in uh, this morning. I think it's that camera that's working, is it? Nice. And I've been looking at the wrong one. There we are. Hello. Morning. So apologies for that, but we bear with, bear with. So it is lovely to see you this morning. After who enjoyed the coronation yesterday? Wasn't it terrific? It was fantastic. And in light of that, in front of you, you have a little quiz. A little quiz, a, um, a Kings and Queens of England quiz. So be having a look at that. And uh, in your pack, you have, uh, you have a pack in front of you as well. There's a pen in there. There's some blank sheets of paper for people who'd love to be a little bit creative this morning. Everything else in that pack just leave it until you are instructed. So um, that would come later in the service. So you've got little, little teams as well. Little teams, little villages, little gatherings. You may notice that each of the seats is in a little group. That is your little collaborative group that you're working with this morning. So share answers. You've got one of those between, off you go. You, you, could, you could be having a go as well. Wait, is, is this your? Yeah. Oh. Come on. Right, here we go. Yeah, is there a pen in there?
Well, it is lovely. I've been going round. There's all sorts of techniques going on, numbers, lines, drawing together. But more than anything, my goodness, people are learning. People are learning all the names of the kings and queens. It's quite eye-opening. It's fantastic. So that is a task to carry on doing through the morning. There are no prizes except for your self-esteem. And the answers, there is an answer sheet hidden under the collection plate at the back so that later you can have a look, you can go and have a look and see how well you did. But otherwise you can carry on doing that perhaps through the morning. So let's join together and pray. So as we come together, we're going to say the confession. So if we just say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate faults. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Let's stand and sing. You may detect a theme in our songs this morning and you might be able to guess what the theme is as well. I don't know if you watched the coronation service, but it was very clear that King Charles III was uh, professing his obedience, really, to the King of Kings, which is Jesus Christ. And so we're celebrating, as we do every Sunday, and indeed every moment of every day, we can celebrate the King of Kings. So that's, and, and this first song, You Laid Aside Your Majesty, reminds us that as the service made very clear yesterday, uh, Majesty is about service as well and about sacrifice. You laid aside your majesty. my heart and I 
seated. Right, now, I'd like to invite Ken up onto the stage. So I'm, I didn't say I'm Charlotte, I'm the Children's and Families Minister, and Ken here is our intern that's serving in children's ministry here at the moment as well. So Ken, take it away. Hello. Yay. Um, so we're going to do a bit of a game. Um, first, I'm going to ask is David and Mum to come forward, and Samuel and Elizabeth, wherever you are. Samuel. Samuel. Okay, so this game is called um, Follow the King, but we have two lovely women, so it's Follow the King slash Queen. So the game is, you're both going to be versus in each other. Romana's going to be sat on that chair, and Elizabeth's going to be sat on that chair. Each child will be given a blindfold. Do you know how to put blindfolds on? Good boy. Do you know how to put a blindfold on? Okay, I will, before I start, I will put the balls, which are actually under here, and I'm going to throw them like that, okay? The aim of the game is to listen to your queen, listen to your queen, and follow, okay? So they're going to tell you where the balls are, okay? So do you want to put your head, um, headphones? Put your blindfolds on. Do you want to put your blindfold on? And I'm going to move you this way. Don't worry, just follow me. Okay, you have to listen to mum, okay? Can you hear me? Can you see me? No. Good. You ready, Samuel? Three? Oh, wait, I forgot to say this bit. Once you get the ball, which is actually really important, you have to put the ball back inside the bucket. So your parent has to instruct you to come back and put the ball in the bucket. The team, or the parent and child, with the most balls in the bucket wins. You ready? That's up to, that's up to mum to tell him where to go. It's not my problem. Three, two, one, go. Well done. Keep on going. You, you can't shout. I won't be worried. Listen to your queen. People in the aisles can help a little bit. Just no cheating. Oh. People, start cheering. <laughs> Thank you. How many of you got left there? Yes, well done. Oh wow, you got just one more to go. <laughs> one minute. Keep on going, Samuel. Just swing your hands around. Just, yeah, just swing them around. Try to pick up loads at once. Go on. Yeah, just keep on going. I'm not helping. 30 seconds. Okay, David, давай, 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 под креслом, под креслом, David. Under the chair, yeah? You can do it. Yeah, well done, David. Yeah, and behind you, behind you, just behind you. Yes. Pick some more. Move forward. Yeah, there's a... Swing your arms around. <laughs> Counting down from ten, everybody. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and return to your queen. Can I have you counting how many balls you found inside of your bucket? How many have you got inside your bucket? Minus two, okay. How many have we got over there? Ten. How many have we got over here? Minus two. Fourteen. So, we have a winner. Well done, Samuel. Um, I've got a treat for you, so don't go anywhere. 
You get some sweeties. So, can I give them sweets? Do you want some? Are you sure? You're missing out. Do you want sweets? Anyone you want? Perfect. No one wants sweets. Of course. Fantastic. Some excellent, excellent listening going on there to their mum's voice. Wonderful. Right, we're going to do the reading now. Let's turn our eyes to the Bible. How wonderful is the Bible? So today's reading is from Matthew 4, 17 to 25. <clears throat> From that time, from that time on, Jesus began to preach. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother, Andrew. They were casting their nets into the lake, for they were fishermen. Can you all make, make, show me a sign like a fish? Make, make a little fish. They were fishermen. Come, follow me, said Jesus, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once, they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, Jesus saw two other brothers, James and Zebedee, son of Ze James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. And Jesus called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News, you can imagine, can't you? News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. And large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across Jordan all followed him. Let's stand and we'll sing another worship song. King of Kings, Majesty. God of heaven living in me. King of kings, majesty.
to you as our offering. Amen. Please do be seated. Now we're going to think a little bit about um, that reading that Charlotte brought to us a moment ago. But to begin with, I've got a little question for you. In a moment on the screen, you are going to be shown some images of some people. And we'd love for you in your groups, you'll see, as Charlotte said earlier, in your nice little curved villages. We've decided to call them villages for some reason. You're in your villages. And we'd love for you in your little curved groups to chat together and to try and answer our question. So we got some images of people. We'd love for you to first of all work out who they are and what did they change. Who they are and what did they change. So off you go. You have one minute. seconds, you're halfway through. You might need a little one to help you answer one of those. just drawing your conversations to a close for a moment. We shall see how we've done. Okay, so we're going to go through some of the answers now. I'd love for you to call out. I love a bit of heckling, so please join in. Who do we think that first lady is? Florence Nightingale, absolutely. Uh, can anyone tell me what she changed? Nursing. nursing, absolutely. Cleanliness, health, making sure everything is sanitized. She changed nursing. Who's the next gentleman? Oh, not Luther Vandross. Martin Luther King. 
thank you. Junior, anyone tell me what it was that he changed? Civil rights, absolutely civil rights uh, in America. Next gentleman. Charles Darwin, thank you, Matthew. And can anyone tell me what did he change? Yeah, he came up with theory of evolution to change people's mindset on science. Uh, these people? Beat is already there. What did they change? Style of music, absolutely. Changed the style of music. Not solely on their own, but there we go. Uh, next one. What did Greta do? What is she doing? Climate change, she's raising awareness of climate change. And last one. Boo. boo! Well done. Does anyone know what boo changed? Monsters. Monsters and humans living together. Thank you, Liz. There speaks a head teacher of a primary school. So there we go. Absolutely. She changed the mindset of monsters that in actual fact, if you gather laughter from children you can power your generators yes that's what the film's about okay so the mindset of humans and monsters together so the question is that actually these people are hugely influential whether you agree with them or not they have been hugely influential um, some of them current some of them have got the legacy that we can still recognize even though they're not currently alive we have got influences around us all the time and the thing is that people influence us whether we know it or not you might sit there and go no one makes the decisions in my life apart from me i am the king or queen of my life but the truth is that actually loads of people influence us I remember when I was teaching, we were at a time where it was a little bit tricky. Our head teacher had to um, just step aside for health reasons. I was assistant head at the time. And you're suddenly put in this position of who do you bring in to help in that situation? And we had a list of people we could go and approach, a list of people we could ask, could you come and help lead our school for this moment? And they were just names on paper to me, to be perfectly honest. I didn't know any of them. But I then spoke to the head who had to leave because he was feeling a bit poorly and said, who would you choose? And he said, this person. This is the person I would choose to step in and look after the school in this time. And although I didn't know the person at all, I didn't know anything apart from what was written on the paper, just like those other names of people on paper, I trusted what that head told me. I trusted him enough to make a big decision as to what was coming. So the question is, who do you listen to and follow? Who is it? And bonus points for saying Jesus, well done, we got that one. Now the other people. Okay, so I want us to think about who else is it that influences us? Is there someone in authority? Someone in charge, something political who influences us? Is it someone in our schools? Is it someone in our streets? Someone in our family? Who is it that you turn to and say, I'm really stuck, I need to make a decision. What would you advise? So who are the people that we follow and listen to? So just chatting in your little uh, villages for a moment, who are those people? Okay. So I'm absolutely sure 
that if I were to take feedback, we'd probably be here till next week. There are so many people who influence us. There are so many people that we listen to and turn to. People we know personally, people that we know really well, people further afield. Well, if that person's saying something, I need to think about whether I believe and agree with them or not. We are influenced all the time. And what is interesting, what we're going to be thinking about today is, yes, we had the king's coronation yesterday. And we saw that lots of people watched that. Put your hand up if you did watch that, so I get an idea of who was there. Lovely, fantastic, hands down, thank you. Well, if you were watching yesterday, you would have seen this. When the service started, right at the beginning of the procession, before anything else, there was a cross that was paraded and led the procession down through the church. The coronation cross was made out of Welsh silver, specifically put together for yesterday's coronation. But you might have noticed there's a tiny little red dot in the middle. Now, inside that red dot, if you've got brilliant eyesight to have actually seen it, but you can see it because we've enlarged it on there, you will see that there's a wooden cross. Now, that wooden cross is phenomenal because those two bits of wood, those two shards of wood that have made that cross, are part of Jesus' cross taken from the Vatican from Pope Francis. So we have got there, depends where you sit on that one, I know. But Pope Francis gifted what he believes is to be real fragments of the real cross for this coronation. Now, I don't know about you, but what that says to me is that at the beginning of the procession, Christ is given the first step. He is the one that led the way to yesterday's coronation. Wherever you stand on coronation, whether you stand on the authenticity of the, those bits of wood, the heart behind it was that pieces of Jesus' cross would lead before the King of England. And so we have got there that the king who was anointed and uh, coronated yesterday and all the things that took place actually said, before me goes Jesus. And that's what we're going to think about today. Before me goes Jesus. And so we're going to be thinking about, well, if we're going to align ourselves to someone, if we're going to say, I'm going to follow someone, then I want it to be Jesus through and through in my life. I want it to be him that's the one that I give my allegiance to. He's the one that is on the throne, and he is the king of kings. So if the cross is the thing that led yesterday, who is Jesus? Now, you've got probably a thousand answers to that question. If I said, who is Jesus, you would come up with son of God, incarnate, Lord of Lord, king of kings. I don't know, you throw so many things at me as to who Jesus is. But what we know about people and what we can learn about them is through their words and through their actions. So what we learn about Greta Thunberg is not just what she says about climate change, but her actions too. We don't just know what Martin Luther King thought about equal rights. We can see through the actions that he lived it out. So not only do we have the words, but we have the actions to back it up. And so, if we were to think about Jesus, you might think about all these actions that we can think about uh, that he did. So, we're just going to pop on the next slide. Thank you, Lucy. So, we have got, maybe you would say to me, turning water into wine. That would be something that comes into your mind if we say, what are his actions? Feeding the 5,000. Meeting the woman at the well in the middle of the day because she didn't want to be met by anyone because she was an outcast. Having the wisdom to say to the authorities, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. We have a king of kings who sits down beside sinners and welcomes time with them. We've got a king of kings who can walk on water and can calm the storm. A king of kings who can raise the dead back to life again. A king of kings who can bring healing and restoration who washes the disciples' feet before giving up his life. 
and who is resurrected and restores people back to him. That is who Jesus is. And you could tell me a thousand more actions that back up his words as to what he says. But we're going to take a moment, we're going to break our time now, because we would love you (laughs) to do our talk for us today. (laughs) So you're going to be working together. We'd love for you to discuss in your groups two answers, two questions that we've got. So we're going to ask you to think about what are the qualities of a perfect king? What are the qualities, what are the characteristics, what makes a king perfect? And also, on the flip side, what is a perfect kingdom? What is it like to be part of that kingdom? So we're going to throw open the floor for a couple of minutes. We're going to ask you to chat to the people around you. Just think about what makes a perfect king, what makes a perfect kingdom. And then we're going to ask you to just give us some of your thoughts. So we'd love for you to chat amongst yourselves. We'd love for you to give some time to those two questions. I'm going to say, I'm going to give five minutes, which is not long, I know. So you can do a couple of minutes on the first one and then move to the next one. It would be lovely to hear as many uh, voices in that as possible. So off you go, our two questions. Okay, so if we can start, think about the second question now. Second question, the perfect kingdom. One minute warning, one minute.
Okay. <laughs> so I'd love for you to just draw your conversations to a close. So, bringing our conversations to a close, I'd love to just hear some of the thoughts that you had in your villages. Anyone got anything to do with that first question, first of all? What were some of the qualities that you thought would make the perfect king? What are the qualities or characteristics that would go with that? Someone who cares for his people. For his people, thank you. Wonderful. King, love Jesus. Loving Jesus, fantastic. Anyone else? Yes. Just, just King. Brilliant. Anyone else? Yeah, lovely over here. Someone who is making hearts and brave. Oh, thank you. So I'm brave as well. Thank you, David. Being good. Oh, good King. We definitely need that. Having integrity. Wisdom. Wisdom, integrity, good. Any more right over there? Lovely. Somebody who's just. Just, yep, absolutely just, thank you. Yeah, what do you think, Gideon? I can't care for one another, for others. Someone looks after others. Yep, lovely, thank you. Someone who resonates with their people. Someone who resonates with their people. Absolutely. Thank you. Brilliant. Anyone else? Take the last couple. Yeah. Unbiased. Unbiased. Lovely. Thank you. Someone who's peaceful. Someone who is peaceful. Someone who seeks after peace would be really good. On it. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Lovely. So if those are the qualities of a perfect king, someone who's just, loving, kind, caring, someone who's peaceful, someone unbiased, um, good. If that's what is a perfect king, who can tell me what a perfect kingdom would look like? And that's the harder question of the two. So I wonder how we're going to get on with this. What does a perfect kingdom look like? United. United. Fantastic. Thank you. No pain or illness. No pain or illness. Thank you. Any more? What does the kingdom look like? We thought of equality. Equality. Brilliant. Thank you. Equality. Yep. Harmony. Living in harmony. Thank you. Fabulous. A living in harmony. Oh, I'm getting my steps up today. This is good. Anyone else? Defense. Oh, so do you mean that they are safe then if they're defense? They're safe. Lovely. Thank you. The world without evil. A world without evil. Oh, sorry, John. I thought you had your hands up. <laughs> sorry. Lovely. Anyone else? Yes, Mitchell. A protected one. A protected kingdom. Fantastic. These are incredible. And I'm sure there are lots more that are going around our heads at the moment. Now, it's pretty obvious that no earthly kingdom can be perfect. But God's can and is. And we know that Jesus as the king of kings, he is all those qualities and more. He is greater than what we've even said. But a kingdom where there's peace, a kingdom where there's no pain and no suffering, a kingdom where we're united, a kingdom that follows a perfect king is the kind of kingdom I want to be part of. And the joy is that if we believe and trust in Jesus, that's exactly the kingdom we do become participants in. We align ourselves to the king of kings, put himself, ourselves under his authority in which case we can trust what it is that he is doing. And so Jesus, when he was speaking to, um, or in our passage that we we're hearing earlier, we can hear the words that he said and the actions that he did. Now, the first thing Jesus said, in actual fact, when he started his ministry, and that passage is taken right at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, his first of all thing was to say, repent 
for the kingdom of heaven is near. What was he meaning? He was meaning, I am coming, I am here, and the kingdom is coming and breaking through into this world. So what is our response? Our response is to repent. It's to turn away from the things that we know are not of God. That was his first message. The first thing he said, he picked up from John the Baptist and carried on, repent. The next thing he does, the very next thing we read, is that he then goes up to these fishermen and he says to them, come and follow me. That's a huge ask. Come and follow me. But what we read is that immediately those fishermen do exactly that. They leave everything behind and they follow Jesus. But he goes on to say, and I will make you fishers of men. So Jesus doesn't just start with repent and follow, but his next step is to say, and I'm going to ask you to be part of what it is that we're doing. You are part of this kingdom. It's not simply a case of following a leader and just say, I align to that, but I'm not part of it. It's I align to our king of kings and I am actively participating. I will be a servant in that kingdom. And his actions back it up. When he says this, word spreads. And we hear about Syria, Decapolis, Judea, Jerusalem. We hear all these places. And people bring their sick and bring those in severe pain and bring those demon possessed and bring those who are paralyzed to Jesus. And if you know your geography, the Galilee where this takes place, the direct middle of where Jesus is speaking is in the center of all those places that he mentions. Syria to the north, we've got Decapolis off to the east, we've got Judea to the south. They are all around where Jesus is preaching and where he is speaking. And they come from far away, from different backgrounds. The Decapolis was mainly Greek. And so you've got different people coming to seek Jesus and to seek his kingdom. So our call then is to say, God, I want you to be the king of kings in my life. I want you to be the one that influences me. I want you to be the one who I follow and listen to. And what was really interesting, when we were playing that game on the thrones where we had our two queens there, you might not have heard it, but uh, Romana was actually speaking in Ukrainian, which was wonderful, because she, she knows straight away that if I speak Ukrainian, then my son will understand my voice. And with everything else that's going on, you did so brilliantly, David, 14 balls in there. Well done, Samuel as well. But we had, actually, if you know Jesus, you will know his voice. If you know him, you will seek him out and listen to him and follow his commands. And the thing is, we can get caught up in who Jesus has been, who he was. Jesus absolutely came and met us in the form of a baby. So he knows, someone said, a king, a perfect king knows what it's like. The perfect king does know what it's like. Jesus knows exactly what it's like to live on this earth. And he was born human and was born vulnerable and was born in a family. He knows what it's like. But he also grew up from that. He grew up to be the one who took everything in order that we can repent and come because the kingdom of near is coming close. He died on the cross so that we can come to him. He is our savior, absolutely. But he's the resurrected one. And where is he right now? Right now, he is on his throne, and he is king, and he is victorious, and he is Lord of all. That is where he is right now. And our response is, Lord, we put you on your throne in your right place. So you will see we have a throne actually just over to my right over here. And it's just a visual aid to help us to recognize that when we come into the presence of God, we come into his throne room. We come to the place where he is king and Lord. And so we're going to respond in a moment. I'd like to invite the band to come up. And our response is a simple one, but a difficult one. (laughs) 
It's simple because what we're going to invite you to do, if you wish to and if you want to, if you want to say, Jesus, I put you back on the throne that I have kind of mistaken, I've taken other people's points of view, I've been influenced by other people, I put you back on the throne in my life, then I'm going to encourage and invite you to kneel in a moment. If that is what you want to do, go for it. If you find that physically difficult, please bow your head at that moment. But we are going to invite people to kneel and place Jesus back on the throne. If you want to do that in your seats, brilliant. If you want to do it in front of the throne, feel free. But it's a time of response. And it's also difficult because we're saying, you are the one in charge of my life. You are the one that leads. And just as we do that, we've had um, some people praying before the service. And this was what they felt God was saying. Is there a picture of a swallow flying freely in the sky with plenty of dives and movements? And a feeling that maybe God is saying, I long for you to be as free as that swallow, without a care to hold you back from me. I long for you to be free in worship and discipleship so that others can sense your freedom in me and you are seated with me in the heavenly place. Act like it. For others will see the freedom in you and want to know this freedom for themselves. This freedom comes from knowing my word and obeying in the context and conditions under his authority. So I'd like to just take a moment. You may wish to close your eyes if that helps you to focus. Sophie, up to you. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the King of Kings. And we place you back on your throne. And some of us now may wish to kneel before you, Jesus, to place you back where you belong. If we have mistaken who it is who truly rules in our lives. you are the king you are our king the king of kings and the lord of lords and although we follow others and other things in our lives we place you rightfully at the head of it that you are the one ultimately leading us Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to continue praying, continue kneeling if you wish to kneel. And we're going to go into a time of worship now. And we just invite you to join in whenever you feel that you're ready and you want to. Either sit or stand, kneel, whatever you feel called to do. And we will worship now.
Thank you, Lord Jesus, that your name is above every other name. Amen. Well, we're going to spend a couple of moments now just with some prayer. And you'll find in your packs a little shape that looks like this. There's enough for one each. If you'd like to share those out now, so in your packs you should find uh, our part of our crown. And also three different colored sticky dots maybe or sticky hearts. It depends which pack you've got. So if you want to get those out and make sure everyone's got one of those, that'll be brilliant. Thank you. So there should be some packs of stickers, might look a bit like this, so there might be hearts. And we're gonna use these to help us to pray. So just make sure you can get close to one set of stickers for the moment. Just wanna take you one of the biggest ones you can get, one of the big stickers, and make it into a crown first of all. So just fold it round and stick it together so you made it to a little crown. That'd be great. Now, one thing you might have seen or heard about yesterday in the coronation, there was a very particularly special moment within the service where the king was hidden from view. It was a time when he was anointed with oil. And it was put in the ampulla, which is a picture of it there. And the oil inside of it was actually taken just last week from the um, Garden of Gethsemane. Two olive groves were used to crush the oil. The oil was then consecrated at the Church of the Sepulchre, so the place of the cross, and um, it was then brought over so that that was the anointing oil that was used yesterday. Now, what you wouldn't have seen is what went on behind that screen, but Charles was then uh, anointed on his head, on his heart, and on his hands. And so we're going to take that as a little helper for us today, our heads, our hearts, and our hands as we pray. So the first thing I'd love for you to do is just take in one color, whichever color it is, that is going to represent head. So in a moment, we're just going to take a couple of moments just quietly by ourselves to start adding that color to your crown. You can stick the dots all over it, as many as you want. But as you're doing that, we'd love to invite you to pray for all those in authority, the heads of countries, the heads of uh, principalities, the heads, the heads of uh, different governments, the heads of local churches and schools, whatever comes to mind, just pray for those people who are the heads. And if you have done that, feel free to take a different color. And this is going to represent heart. Those people, places, countries, situations that are on our hearts at the moment, we would love to offer them to God now. So choose a different color. And this represents those places on our heart at the moment. People, countries, situations.
And finally, if you've done that, I see some of you already. If you're still praying, keep going. But the third color is for our hands, the people that we serve, the people that we meet with each day. Pray for God to provide opportunities to serve others well, to bring his kingdom into everything that we do this week. So I'd like to invite you to just hold that in front of you now. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for all those who are in authority, who are heading up different things. Lord, all those people who we have already brought to your attention, would you come alongside and be your spirit guide and bring them wisdom. For all those on our hearts at this moment, for all those who are suffering or in pain, for those whose situations are difficult, May they know your comfort at this time. And Lord, for all those that we can have the joy and privilege to come alongside this week to serve, whichever way that may be, take our hands and use them for you. In your mighty name. Amen. Jude. Fantastic. So as we come towards the end of our service, we have a few uh, notices. So Ken, my, my adorable assistant, is going to now um, bring these little... Right. Oh, reminders. Okay. So we've got little monkey. Everyone say, oh, oh. So Holiday Club has, um, has come out and, um, uh, and you need to know that Holiday Club is the 22nd to the 24th of August, which is our thing that we're going to do in here with uh, lots, of, lots of you here. So what have we got, Ticken? Okay, um, Snappy Dragon, you've got to snap up a place. So, spots went, <laughs> so there's, it all went live on Monday, and uh, so you can sign up your children for that. Okay, Ken, what's in the bag? Come on in. Uh, oh, oh, come on, what have we got? It's a team T-shirt, come on. You know you want to do it. In order to run Holiday Club, we need an amazing team. So I think we've only got about a third of the team that we need. There's a need. Fill the need. So come and have fun with that. That would be amazing. There is in the news link, there'll be a, 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 a bit to click that you can sign up for it. Or talk to Jude, Ken, or me about that. All right. Okay. Ken, what's in the bag? What's in the bag? Oh, it's a nice little bit of juicy admin. Um, so Jean, as I said, if anybody wants to fill these forms in to get their addresses onto Church Suite. So these forms will be on the sound desk, I believe she said they are. So be filling in all those forms. Fantastic. Ken, anything else in the bag? Yeah. Oh, Ken, some love and some hands. So the Mother's Union tomorrow is, is the... No, because of the coronation, the big help out. That's happening um, across the country tomorrow. Mother's Union are doing their little bit here <laughs> with the big hands, with the hands, uh, the big help out. There is going to be cake, coffee in the foyer there tomorrow. So Pearly, Pearly and Bloom are helping out in Pearly. They're doing lots of helping out and lots of people might be joining in with that. But if you want to come and there's some children's activities and quizzes as well and, some, and supporting the Mother's Union. So that is tomorrow and that's 10.30 till 1.00. Fantastic. Let's sing our final song. Please stand.
Give him a clap. So as we go, the love of the Lord King Jesus draw you to himself. The power and kingship of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the joy of the Lord King Jesus fill our hearts. So Christ Church, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.